ChatGPT. Now, you've likely heard about this before and you may even have used it and you might be really excited by it or potentially terrified by the whole thing. What we're gonna look at in this video is can you use ChatGPT to help you perform modern GIS tasks more efficiently? And we're gonna answer the burning question, is ChatGPT gonna replace all of our jobs? And frankly, no, it's not going to. So what I did is I actually provided ChatGPT four different prompts to understand how it can help you more efficiently write code and ultimately perform modern GIS tasks a little bit more effectively. So let's take a look at the first one. It's a pretty simple problem to actually turn a shapefile into a GeoJSON file using GDAL. As you can see, I provided ChatGPT some pretty specific prompts, which will be important as we go through the different examples here. And as expected, I got a very clear response with the code I need to run. I just need to replace the different file names and actually some detail on the different arguments that are being used in the function. Now, this is one of the first great use cases for ChatGPT. If I want to look up something very quickly and get a little bit of extra context that I might not have before, ChatGPT is a great place to do that. Also, the more specific with the prompt that you can provide, the better the response you're gonna get. ChatGPT is called a generative AI model, which means that you provide it some prompt and some information, and it will generate a response based off of the training data that's provided. Now, the training data that ChatGPT is given is lots of different things from every corner of the internet and basically everything that you could possibly want to put in there. Now, currently, this is running on a model called GPT-3. GPT-4, the next generation of this, actually trains on a lot more data than it was, as you can see here in this chart. All right, let's try a second problem, and this one will differ in the fact that I'm gonna give it a problem with a couple different libraries and see if it can come up with a functional answer as well. I'm gonna ask it to read some data from GeoPandas and actually turn that into a map with Folium. And once again, ChatGPT does a pretty good job. I was very clear that I wanted it to use very specific libraries, which definitely helps give me the right response back. If I didn't give that, I could have gotten different libraries or different things back from ChatGPT, but ultimately it gave me the framework of the code I need to write. I can take that and modify it for what I ultimately need to do. And once again, you can see you get a little bit of context around this here too. So this is the second use case. How do I use two different libraries or multiple libraries together to perform a problem that I actually want to solve? And I like using ChatGPT in this way is ultimately to look up something that might take you a long time to find on the web or find the very specific answer that you want. ChatGPT can look at those different pieces and kind of assemble it for you in the way that you want. All right, so in problem number three, I actually provided a little bit more of a vague prompt to ChatGPT to see what it could do. I asked it to take a raster data set, create a vegetation model, and then from there, vectorize that data set. But I did not tell it the libraries that I wanted to use or anything else about the problem I wanted to solve. As you can see, it gave me some context around what I need to do and the different pieces of code I may need to use, but it didn't assemble it into one concrete set of code that I might need to run. Now, what this tells me is that ChatGPT GPT is trained on these different pieces, like the library's Rasterio or some of the different tools that we've used before. But ultimately, it doesn't have some of the nuance it needs to ultimately assemble those together and create something that's really applicable to a complete analytical workflow. And we'll look a little bit more at that later too. So in my final question, I asked ChatGPT a very vague question. Can it use SQL to create a bulk nearest neighbors analysis? between two different tables. And I'll be honest, this one surprised me a little bit. ChatGPT actually did a pretty good job and it gave the information from a very specific blog post that I know that referenced that, you can see that here, and performed this cross-lateral bulk nearest neighbor join and seek. But ultimately it did a pretty good job. And this is a good indication of the depth that ChatGPT can provide you. It can give you some really good detail out there and just tells you how much information it's ultimately trained on. And what this tells me is ChatGPT has collected lots of information. And modern GIS information and tutorials are scattered all over the web, but ultimately this gives you a good way to assemble that in one location and collect that much faster than searching on your own. So the big question is, is ChatGPT going to take all of our jobs and replace everything we do? Now the answer, I think you can tell is no, as I said at the top of the video, and there's a few reasons why that is. First of all, all the information it collects is written by people. People like you and me write the code, the examples, and even think of the ideas to build the next library. So people are always gonna be integral in that process. ChatGPT is just a layer of information that helps you collect that a lot faster and should be viewed as another toolkit that you can use. So how can you use that toolkit in your workflows in modern GIS today? And there's three ways I think you can do this. The first is that ChatGPT ultimately acts like a better search engine. It helps you find those answers faster. Instead of going out on your own and searching through Google or Stack Overflow, you can ask it a pretty concrete question and it can collect that information for you and give you a pretty good response that's readable and has some of the context that you need to view it. The second way I would use ChatGPT is actually turn your ideas into code. As you saw in the third example, I had a pretty vague idea of what I wanted to do. 
And I know as a geographer the problem I'm trying to solve, and I know within GIS the things I want to do to get there and the data I need, but turn that into a modern GIS workflow that's code-based with different libraries can be a little bit tricky. So ChatGPT can take that and turn that into the pieces that you need, and then as you need more information, you can go to deeper on those topics as you want. And as ChatGPT is given more information in the different GPT models that it provides, the better this information is gonna be. And then the third use case I recommend is actually finding errors. If you're having a pr problem in a specific library, ChatGPT may not provide you exactly what you need every time, but it can help you maybe think through those problems a little bit better and see if there's potentially any problems in the code that you're writing. And as we can see, ChatGPT is trained on all these very niche libraries that we might be using within modern GIS. So it's a good place to basically understand and ask a question and ChatGPT will look through all the different documentation and everything it's been trained on to try to find, help you find the right answer that you are ultimately looking for. Now, the most important point about all this is ChatGPT will not replace a few different things. The geospatial knowledge, the spatial thinking, and then how you implement GIS cannot be replaced here. So I actually asked ChatGPT two other questions. The first was to take flooded areas and understand that in a population overlap. And then the second was to actually create an index understanding social vulnerability and climate risk condition. Now, looking at these answers, you can see that it has some of the pieces, right? It doesn't have the complete answer. It doesn't tell you exactly what you need to do, but it kind of tells you a very vague and rough framework. And then it gives you some basic code to write, but it definitely doesn't even get close to solving the root of the problem. And if you look at this, you can kind of tell a machine wrote it. It doesn't give you a very clear view that it is a person applying analytical and contextual knowledge to a very specific problem. And that's the number one thing I would take away from this, is that you as a geographer, as someone who's worked in modern GIS and has written code before, you are ultimately going to know what you want to do. You have the geospatial thinking, and you probably have some local knowledge of the problem that you ultimately want to solve. ChatGPT can be a tool to help you get there faster and help you implement these ideas within a modern GIS setting. But ChatGPT will never replace the spatial thinking and the unique knowledge that you have. And ultimately, that is one thing I want you to take away from this. So I'd love to hear more from you. Have you used ChatGPT before and how are you using it? Are you excited by this or does this totally freak you out? I think this is a really great technology and I'm really curious about the ways that this, this can be used within a modern GIS setting. Share any of your ideas in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you for watching again and we will see you next time.